right, so this will be the following video, following up to my taking delivery video. I want to apologize to anyone who saw my video that described taking delivery and was expecting to see the actual delivery taking place. Uh, I apologize about that because uh, that was the whole, that was what I was expecting to uh, give you guys was the precursor to taking the delivery and then the actual taking delivery. That was what it was supposed to be. But uh, stuff kind of changed here. And uh, yeah, so um, for anybody who thought I was just wasting your time or BS and that, that wasn't the case at all, it's just some uh, horrible events kind of happened. Um, so I'm going to try to run it down for you as quick as possible. That way it don't seem like I'm just wasting time here making a long video. It has nothing to do with like trying to make the video this long for this reason or views or none of that. This has everything to do with explaining my horror story from Dodge. Um, and hopefully the right person sees this that cares about the Dodge brand um, and cares about customer service. And maybe, you know, something else can be done in a more reasonable amount of time. As far as my situation so to give you a rundown i had a brand new 2019 charger scat pack traded that in got a brand new 21 charger scat pack wild body because i like the way the wild bodies look that wild body situation happened with that it was total right i wound up reaching out to a dealer in michigan um and i can I don't have any problem notating who that dealer was because I have no problems with that dealership at all. The customer service, my experience with that dealership was A1. A1. Like, I, I, that was the best experience I had at the dealership as Williams Brothers Dodge in Dundee, Michigan. The reason I got in contact with them, I was on True Car. I saw a Hellcat pretty much spec'd out the way that I wanted it, which was the way that my wild body scat pack was specked out that got totaled um and i'm like wow this is exactly what i want and it had a low price on like 70 grand msrp i'm like uh so i write an email on true car and i wound up calling up there the lady said um yeah that's employee price and it's actually a customer special order so i'm like okay um, long story short based on the email inquiry i put on true car uh, the salesman christopher no called me and i explained to him oh yeah i already talked to someone uh, but he explained to me that yeah, we can give you the best deal. So long story short, they was able to give me the best deal as far as savings and everything. So you know, I'm in I'm in Philadelphia. Um, the fact that I chose to get my car from Michigan should tell you that Christopher Noah accommodated me a, a well. You know, what I mean, I called all the dealerships in, in Philly in my area. They said, mm, Nah, we can't do that. You can might as well go with that dealership. So that's what I did, but that's a whole nother video, a whole nother story. I'm just running down the backstory. So I ordered my car through Christopher No Williams brother Dodge, Dundee, Michigan. Smoke show, dual carbon strike, red interior, Harman Kardon. That's the gist of it. Boom. Wait three months. Finally, Christopher No is in contact with me. Yo, your car is expected to be delivered, blah, blah, blah. I get my plane tickets, me and my pops. You know what I mean? We're going to ride out there. Well, we're going to fly out there to Michigan, drive the car back home. Like I said, I'm going to try to condense everything. I will be making videos of the whole experience, me at the dealership, showing the car, taking delivery. But this, I'm trying to put this video out uh, uh, first because I just want to kind of get the backstory. And like I said, hope that Dodge kind of sees this and, and contacts me because calling Dodge customer service has been a waste of time for me uh, to a certain point. They're not calling me back. I get the car. Me and my pop, we start driving back to Philly. It's an eight and a half hour ride back to Philly. It's like 560 miles. 200 miles into our trip, the check engine light comes on. It says I slash C, coolant level low. I know enough about cars. Enter cooler, coolant level low. Hmm. I called a salesman, Christopher No, like, yo, this check engine light just came on. It's like 200 miles on the car. Uh, He's like, oh, well, you want to bring it back? And I'm like, I kind of rather not bring it back. I'm, I'm already 200 miles into my trip. Like, I, 
you know, this is a difficult situation. I'm so far away from home. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to have to get this car towed or if I'm good to keep driving it. Um, I didn't get any other, like, red light warning messages. The motor temperature was fine. The intercool the supercharger has a separate cooling system than the motor. So when it was saying intercooler coolant level low, I pulled over at the next rest stop, popped the hood, and I can see the reservoir specifically designated for the supercharger and the intercoolers, and that was full. So I'm like, it's saying it's low, but the reservoir is full. It's, it's full cold where it was from, from the factory. So I'm like, the cooling level is not low. I don't know what's going on here. Check engine light stayed on. Don't know why the check engine light was on, but I know I was getting a message saying intercooler coolant level low. And I didn't have a problem driving it back home because break-in period. You know, I'm cruising on the highway. I'm taking it easy, not doing nothing crazy. By the time I get back to Philly, the break-in period is done. Boom, I can have fun with the car. All right, so uh, I tell Christopher no. I just keep him posted. I just wanted to document that, yo, this check engine light just came on 200 miles away from your bill of shit. I just left the car brand new, a special order. So I checked the cooling level to make sure, you know, I had cooling in there. I'm like, all right, cool. So I keep on driving home, keep on driving home. Um, long story short, uh, oh, also on that ride home, the performance pages, because I was trying to check my intercooler temperature. So I went to performance pages, I was able to check it, boom, all right, it was high, it was like one something. The ambient temperature outside was probably like 80 something, and I'm riding on the highway. So that, those temperatures should have been way lower, it was like 120. So I'm like, man, that seemed kind of high to me, but it's my first Hellcat. I didn't have a chance to look at forms, but I just wanted to at least keep an eye on the temperature to, to make sure it wasn't like rising and rising and rising and rising. But like I said, I never received no no warning lights that was like, like turn the car off, like red lights, ding, 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 whatever. It just kept saying coolant level low, but nothing was saying like it's overheating, nothing like that. That made me feel like I needed to just shut it down and get it towed another 360 miles, which would cost a lot of money. So I kept on cruising home. Long story short, I get home. Or, or, well, like I said, the performance pages, it worked initially. And then once I like pulled over, checked everything, and, and I got back in the car to keep driving home, the performance pages stopped working. It said, feature temporarily unavailable. And I couldn't see my performance pages for the rest of the 300, whatever, miles, 60 miles I was going home. So now I'm panicking because I'm like, I can't even see what my intercooler temperatures are now. I'm like, it's a brand new car. Why isn't the performance pages working? I keep hitting, I hit the performance page button, boom, it'll say loading, 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 sorry, this feature is temporarily unavailable, boom, that whole ride home, couldn't see my temperatures no more, <sighs> okay, I get home, uh, so that was like the two initial problems, I'm like, what's going on here, my performance page is not working, my check engine light is on. I keep getting this message, intercooler, cooling level low. Whenever I kind of go a little bit fast to like change lanes or something, intercooler, cooling level low will pop up and then it'll go away. If I got to get on it again to kind of merge, intercooler, cooling level low, then it'll go away. I get home the following morning, I call the dealerships up to make appointments to get my car in there. They, they all ask the same question, did you buy the car from us? And I'm like, no. So I asked him, like, what difference does it make if I bought the car from you? They said, because if you bought the car from us, we will put you number one priority to get your car back in here if you bought this brand new car from us and you're having problems with it. But because you didn't buy it from us, you're just a regular customer, and then we'll get you in whenever we can get you in type of thing. Now, unfortunately, the place I bought it from was eight and a half hours away. Like, I'm, come on, that's unreasonable for me to have to drive back there just for service. So the next appointment, and this was August 27th, I believe the date was Friday. So I called Cherry Hill Dodge, I called Chapman Dodge and Horsham, uh, and I made appointments with them, and I was able to get an appointment with Mount Ephraim Dodge um, on the following Friday, I believe that was the 9th, no, the 3rd, September 3rd was that following Friday, so that was a week later. Um, I was scared to even drive the car. A few times I drove it, uh, it was like 90 outside. The intercooler temps went as high as 190, 195. I'm like, yo, this is almost maxing out the gauge. But like I said, I still never received a warning message like overheating, anything like that. So at this point, I don't know if there's any damage being done or it didn't go past 195 and never went any higher than that. So I'm like, okay, maybe like, maybe that's like the normal operating time. I don't know. But I mean, usually when you start driving, the temperatures drop, but it wasn't. 
think I did it like one time. I noticed I got on the highway and the temperature dropped to like 80. I was like, oh, all right. And, and then I, after that, it never dropped again. I'll be riding on the highway steady and the temperature is just steady going up 120, 130. I'm like, I'm on the highway cruising. How are these temperatures going up? Anyway, finally that Friday comes. I get it in. Well, a couple other issues too. The door lock, the pin that goes up and down when you hit lock and unlock on your car on the driver's side door, it's rattling like crazy. Every time I hit a bump, it's like I turn my music up. It's just it's just rattling with the bass. That's another problem. When I turn my car on, well, the auto start feature was disabled. I auto start my car. It cuts off by itself. I get in the car. I'm like, it says on the dash, auto start temporarily disabled. I'm like, what the hell? what is going on with this car? Everything is wrong with this car. You know what I mean? I'm like, when I when I when the when the main screen loads. It has the letter U's everywhere. The U Connect symbol was everywhere. Where it's supposed to be different symbols at. It's like a row of symbols here, a row of symbols there, a row of symbols there. It's like U Connect symbols, U Connect symbols, U Connect symbols. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this car? After about 20 seconds, the U Connect symbol turns to the correct symbol it's supposed to be, whether it be assist or, or, or like phone or whatever. And 20 seconds go by, then it'll just like appear as the correct icon that it's supposed to be and then a uconnect symbol would stay where it's supposed to be at that's another issue the auto start that was another issue i got on the highway uh i got on the highway it was wide open no cars there i get on it you know i was driving a normal operating temperature was riding like 15 minutes i merged onto a highway there's no cars on there i floor it boom i floor it boom we gone mm -hmm. uh, i get up maybe like fourth gear it's either fourth gear to fifth gear fifth gear to sixth gear uh the speed is getting a little bit high i'm not going to disclose exact numbers for several reasons but it gets to a certain number and doesn't change gears and doesn't go any faster and i'm like bro this is a hellcat i'm nowhere near the top speed for this car why is it stuck at this miles per hour and not changing gears and not going any faster so I let off the gas and I just drive normal after that. But now I'm getting I'm, I'm already frustrated. Now I'm highly frustrated that my car won't even go past like how fast people go on 95. Like you know what I mean? So oh my goodness, man. So I take it to the dealer. They check the check engine light. I get it in Mount E from on Friday. That's the car. That's the dealer that I bought my wild body scat pack from. I had a good rapport with them. I take it into them. You know, my guy Nate in there took care of me. He said the check engine light came on for auxiliary coolant pump. Okay, it's starting to make sense. The auxiliary coolant pump is the electric pump that specifically for the intercooler cooling system. We need a new one. He said he's going to check out the door rattle. He's going to check out the Uconnect problem. He's going to check out the, the not changing gears at a certain miles per hour. And I, I don't have a chance to look at my notes to see if it's, uh, oh yeah, it was like a clunking sound, like a clunking sound. If you sit in the passenger side, uh, around like the glove box area, it sounds like somebody's like taking something, just like going with the exhaust cage. It's like clunk, 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 clunk. That could be normal. Don't know, but I'm letting them know everything that I'm concerned about for them to tell me if it's normal or not. I didn't build this car. I had scat packs from this point. Two scat packs. I never had a Hellcat. So I know I didn't hear that in my scat pack. So I'm just explaining it. Um... So I told him about the auto start. He said, yeah, if your check engine light is on, the auto start will be disabled as a, as a fail safe. Um, he, and then, uh, long story short, a few days later, he told me, um, yeah, I heard the rattling. It's like an actuator. The rattling for that door, that unlock lock pin that goes up and down. It's like, clang, clang, clang. he said, I, I heard that. He said, we still got to check the, you know, the performance pages, the Uconnect system, showing all used, the performance pages, Zach and Dick. The performance pages after that first day, it was working for me good. So I don't know if it was what kind of glitch it was or whatever. I told him about the gear shifting, not shifting the past the certain gear. He said they won't check that out. Long story short, the mechanic told me that auxiliary cooling pump is showing back order, no ETA. Okay. Now, before I got it into the dealer, I already made my appointments with seven reps. I got the clear vinyl PPF on my front bumper. All right, that'll be a separate video. And I got the windows tenant. I spent, that was like 1400 right there. The, the clear vinyl paint protection on the front bumper. And then I got the rear uh, the rear fender flares that bump out 
the the front part that's gonna take the brunt of all the wind and whatever rocks and whatever I got that the, the whole thing because it comes from factory a little small triangle um, and then I got the tent done on the car like I said I'll make it I got a video for that so I already spent like fourteen hundred dollars just trying to make this car mine how I want it got my tent got my front bumper protected now I drop it off to the shop they say back order no ETA we'll we'll get you a rental car so I'm like okay. So Enterprise picks me up. They get me in a Dodge Journey. It's like a four-cylinder minivan. The thing is front-wheel drive. It's like nothing comparable to my car. But whatever. I'm not going to be picky. But not only that, the car is like busted. It's like somebody crashed it into a wall. It's like, I'm like you see all this damage on this car? Like, So now I'm riding around in this busted car. Like I'm hoping they don't try to blame me for some bustedness that's on this car when I take it back. Next. I call Dodge. Dodge Customer Service, a 1-800 number. I get a case manager named Sue. I explained to her, this is this unacceptable. It's a brand new car. Check engine light came on the first day I drove home with it. I'm at the dealer now. They saying back order, no ETA. Wow, how do I feel right now? This is, this. it's like an $80,000 car. Uh, if you don't, if you can't imagine how I feel or felt and feel right now, just ask a car guy. I'm a car guy. I love my cars. A vacation to me is washing and waxing my car and, and turning the music on and just relaxing, just detailing my car. Like, that's, that's something that I like to do. That's fun for me. I wash my car with a wool mitt. I wash the wool mitt off if it get any dirt on it so it don't scratch my clear coat. That's the kind of car guy I am. I don't park next to cars in parking lots. I park all by myself on an island, and I might even take up two parking spots so I don't get a door dang. I drop my family off at the front of the, the store, and I'll go park somewhere else. If I can't find a good enough parking spot, I'm going further and further away. Because I take pride in the way my car looks. I'm a car guy. That's my thing. Some people don't care. I do. So if you don't understand how I could be feeling, ask a car guy. Ask a car guy that loves his car the way some people love their dogs and everything. This is my, I love my car. Call Dodge Customer Service. They say, oh, yeah, that's unacceptable. We want to see what to do, whatever we can do to get you this part for your car to get you back up and running. So I'm like, okay, cool. I feel like a, a value customer. So Sue says, you know, she contacts me a few days later. The estimated, the estimated date for us to get you that part is September 13th. We'll be in contact with the dealership. I'm like, all right, that's a week away. Well, it was it was the third when I dropped it off. They talking about the 13th. So I'm like, all right, and I mean that's that's about a week and some change or whatever it was. That's that's ten days away. 13th come, I call the dealership. Yo, what's up? My part's supposed to be there today. You're like, nah, no part guy here today. I call Dodge, talk to Sue. Oh, there's been an update. Now your part's been pushed back to the week of the 27th. I'm like, I went from being, okay, this is reasonable, to feeling like my frustration level went from like 60, 70 to like, 568 past 100 once you told me the part not supposed to be there to the week of the 27th now I'm like wait a minute the week of the 27th that Friday is 30 days my car would be sitting in the shop the car would technically be considered a lemon at that part at that point so I told Sue this is unacceptable Miss Sue like I, at this point I'm totally unhappy with my experience it's a brand new car that's been sitting in the shop already going on three weeks. And you mean it's going to be sitting in the shop for four weeks? And I got this rental car. Not to mention, all right, Enterprise told me Dodge pays the daily rate for the car, but they don't pay the taxes. They said I'm responsible to pay the $5.80 something cent per day for taxes. So I'm telling Sue, so you mean to tell me I got a brand new car that's in the shop and I got to pay the taxes almost $6 a day on my rental car that Dodge gave me because they won't pay the taxes. They only pay the, the rate for the car. And I got to come out of pocket for my brand new car sitting in the shop for all this time. But this, 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 this number that I'm going to have to pay is going to be over $200, $300. I don't, I'm, so Sue was like, okay, yeah, well, we can't pay the taxes, but we can see if maybe we can pay your, for your first monthly payment to take care of the taxes. Can you understand my frustration? Please, I... If you can't, oh my goodness! If you need a more of a of a uh, of a visual of how I'm feeling at this point, let's see. Uh, I don't know, like 
thinking like the hawk or something, like turning into the hawk and exploding or screaming or something. I don't know, but I'm telling Sue this is unacceptable. My car gonna be sitting in the shop for going on four weeks now. It's a brand new car. They're building other cars, so if somebody's getting their car built. They're gonna get it and be cool and happy with it. But my brand new car is sitting here because y'all can't get the parts for it. I said, at this point, I'm highly upset. I want to speak to the next level. I said, I want my money back. I want a replacement car at this point. Replacement car will have to be built again. So I would have to wait another three months because there is no car built to my spec on the market right now that's for sale at any dealership. I look nationwide. There is none. They got black ones and white ones, majority. And then the smoke show ones they have don't got the stripes. It don't got the, it don't. So you can't just give me, hey, we'll swap you. Uh, what up, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know what? I'll send it up to the next level. Someone will be contacting you in three to four business days to talk to you about giving you your money back or giving you a replacement vehicle. Now, this was Monday, the 13th. Three to four business days would have been Friday. Well, guess what? No one called me. I waited patiently through three to four business days, hoping that Dodge would contact me and say, hey, hey, let's uh, talk about getting you a replacement car or giving you your money back. Let's talk about this. Nope. Nope. The 13th went by. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I believe. What is it? The, 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 uh, I think I called the, I called the 17th. 17th to the, like, the 23rd. Uh, what's today? The 17th to the, let me see. Let's try to give you a, uh, so today is the 25th. So I called you back over. So today the 25th, so I called 17th, 18th, 19th, 20, 21, 22. Like I called like all these days and I'm like, yo, nobody's calling me back. I'm like, what's going on? I called Sue, I, I put Sue's extension. Press Sue's extension, going straight to voicemail, okay. It's like three days in a row. I leave a message with Sue. I call back, speak to someone else. They tell me, oh, your case was sent up to a guy named Robert. He's the case manager. He's the one that's going to be talking to you about replacement vehicle or or uh, give you your money back. Now, three or four business days would have been that Friday. So that Friday came and went. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I called all those days trying to figure out why Robert hasn't been calling me back. And this is going on 10 days now instead of 3 to 4. Still didn't receive a phone call back. And all I keep getting is, oh, let's see if Robert's available. Nope, he's not available. I'll leave him a message. Next day, nope, he's not available. I'll leave him a message. I'm like, next day, all right, can, can I speak to Robert's supervisor? I need to speak to someone higher than Robert because he's never available and he's not returning my phone calls or my messages. Okay. I'll leave a message with Robert's supervisor. I'll leave a message with my supervisor to contact Robert's supervisor to see if they can contact you. That's what I got. Guess what? Still didn't receive nothing back. This is all this week that just passed. This is this is all like, you know what I mean? The, the, the 17th, 18th, the, the, the uh, 19th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. So the 17th would have been that, that Friday. So then you got the 18th, Saturday, 19th is uh, Sunday. So the, the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, um, all of those days is when I kept calling every day, day after day, day after day. Robert's not calling me. Robert's not calling me. Can you contact his supervisor? They said, we want to get, I'm going to call my supervisor to contact Robert's supervisor to contact you. I call back the next day. Hey, Robert's supervisor never contacted me. They said, oh, well, he'll be contacting you the next day. Well, guess what? Robert's supervisor still never contacted me, and Robert still never contacted me. So at this point, I feel like, okay, Dodge officially doesn't care anymore. I'm not going to get any help from Dodge. So whenever my car is done and I got to pay the taxes for this rental car, I can't even get in contact with Dodge to even try to make that right, yet alone me at the point of not even wanting this car anymore because it's been sitting in the shop for how long? All right? So this has been going on. Dodge customer service is ducking me. Dodge Customer Service is not returning my calls. Dodge Customer Service is like they don't want to have anything to do with me when Dodge sold me a defective brand new car from day one and they can't even get me to part in a reasonable amount of time. So guess what? The sales manager, Ms. Bronda, from Williams Brother Dodge in Dundee, Michigan, she was able to find a part on her end because I explained to her what was going on. So she said, yeah, I was able to find a part. It should be there. You know, yesterday, Friday, it should be there this afternoon. 
call your dealer. I called my dealer like, yo, uh, yeah, the, the manager from, from Dealer I Bought It From said that she was able to get the part over to you guys over in Mount Ephraim. He said, let me check. Oh, yeah, we do got the part here. We'll start working on it on Monday. Right? How does a sales manager from a Dodge dealership give me better customer service than Dodge itself? How is a sales manager still returning my calls? And she doesn't even have to. I bought the car from her. She don't have to go out and do all this extra stuff. It's Dodge who's, who's responsible for what's going on right now. Not the sales manager from the dealer I bought it from. She's just the middleman. She just got me the car and sold it to me. But she's going above and beyond and doing more than Dodge is doing for me right now. At this point, like, I'm seriously considering never buying another Dodge again a day of my life. That's pretty much where I'm at. Because if they can treat me like a piece of crap that I just spent $80,000 on my third brand new Dodge. They're not returning my call. They're not concerned about my concerns. They're not trying to make it right. At this point, Sue explaining that they can try to give me my first month's payment to take care of the taxes on this rental. Sue's not even my case manager anymore. Robert is, and he's not answering or returning my calls. Robert's supervisor is not answering or returning my calls for over a week now that they were supposed to be contacting me. So Ms. Bronda was able to get the part to the dealership. So hopefully the dealership gets my car up and running on Monday. But then what happens when I go to Enterprise and I got to come out of pocket 300 something dollars and Dodge is not returning my call and they're the ones that could try to make it right to give me the money back that I got to pay for a rental car because my brand new car was in the shop for a month. Right? So what would you do if Dodge is not returning your calls about this issue and your car could be in the, potentially be in the shop for 30 days? contact a lawyer right and I'm, okay if y'all gonna give me y'all butt to kiss y'all gonna keep ignoring my phone calls ignoring my messages your supervisors ignoring the messages i'm being told the supervisor gonna call me the next day i call the next day he still didn't call me oh they'll call you the next day the next day come he still don't call me i'm convinced dodge can care less about me my money me as a customer my loyalty to dodge and dodge if you watching this if you hear this this is exactly how i feel you don't care about me you don't care that I can spend 80 grand on my third brand new Dodge Charger. You don't care that I got to come out of pocket for, the, oh, what, $300 in taxes for a rental car because you sold me a brand new defective car that the check engine light came on the first day I bought it and it's been sitting in the shop for going on four weeks now. You don't care because you're not calling me back. You're not trying to make it right. You're not trying to make sure that I don't have to come out of pocket for anything when I drop this rental car off. You're not trying to reimburse me for anything. You're not trying to talk to me about getting a new car or getting a vehicle replacement, right? So at this point, I feel like I have no other choice now but to, well, I got to contact legal counsel. Who, 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 who else can, can, can make this kind of rise back to a level of concern for someone who actually cares and dies? Like, what else am I to do? As a consumer here in Dodge Customer Service is telling me there is no one higher up. There is no one in corporate. I'm like, can I speak to the owner of Dodge, though, to the CEO, somebody? No, we can't. All we can do is send it up to our supervisors. So now I can't even talk to the supervisors of the people that's not accommodating me in my situation. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. The manager from the dealership I bought it from is helping me more than Dodge is. That's unacceptable. Totally unacceptable on a brand new car. You can't imagine how I feel. Can't imagine, bro. Waited three months to get this car. Flew out to get it. Drove it home. Check engine light on is in the shop. Going on a month. Picked it up August 27th. Still don't have my car back yet. It's September 25th. Dogs, Sue, Sue helped me to the point where I said I wanted to escalate it because you're talking about the week of the 27th now from the it's supposed to be the week of the 13th you keep pushing it back and i'm supposed to get my part i told her to go ahead and escalate it up and after that point everyone ignored me they ignored my messages the super robert ignored my messages robert's not responding to my call robert's supervisor ignored my messages his supervisor's not responding to my call and i've been calling every day every day with 13 14 15 16 17 18, 19, so the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, I've been calling every day, like, Robert was supposed to call me last week. Okay, Robert's supervisor got him, Robert's supervisor still not calling me. Robert and his supervisor still hasn't returned my call. The next day, Robert and Robert's supervisor still hasn't returned my call, and they keep telling me Robert's not available. No one's available. He's not here. I guess he's on vacation. I don't know. Don't know. But now, what is, it's Saturday now, what is it, the 25th, I think? Yeah, Saturday. 
So Robert was supposed to call me <laughs> the previous week. Now it's a week after and Robert still hasn't called me. Robert's supervisor still hasn't called me. When I've called Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to try to get this right, all I was able to do was keep leaving messages. So I started telling customer service, can you send me an email that I call her today? Um, and that I'm calling because Robert was supposed to call me back, never did. I want, I want a paper trail, all right? So at this point, could be some things that I left out of this video because I didn't have my notes that I've been writing down for this card and I didn't have my notes available because it's on my phone. I'm trying to make this video. So if there's any other issues I have with the car or if there's any other stuff that I wanted to, uh, that I said to Dodge as far as it, this whole situation, it, something could have been left out, but I'm writing this video because I don't know if this would make any difference um, by me putting Dodge on blast that the customer service abandoned me after I spent 80 grand on a Hellcat and the check engine light came on the first day I bought it and it's been sitting in a shop for pretty much um, going on a month now. Um, Dodge abandoned me. Dodge customer service abandoned me. It's like they refused to help me any further. How would you feel if you spend that much money for Oh, I got to pay my first monthly payment. <laughs> and I'm paying insurance on a Hellcat by driving a journey. Um, but I, I haven't had my car this whole month. So my first monthly payment, I'm, I'm paying a Hellcat monthly payment for a Dodge Journey pretty much. I'm paying insurance on a Hellcat, but I'm riding a Dodge Journey. Come on, bro. The Hellcat on that journey is going to be way less. The monthly payment on that journey will be way less. But I'm paying as if I'm driving this Hellcat, but it's been sitting in the shop. And and I got to pay the taxes on this rental, $6 a day. So you do the math. Going on, what, going on 30 days, 30 times 6. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. So the moral, the, the pretty much the gist of this story is trying to let my story be heard. I still don't got my car back. Hopefully they work on a Monday to get it fixed, figure out what's going on. Um, I'm not being contacted by Dodge, and this is the worst experience I ever had purchasing a vehicle. I buy a brand new car so I don't have problems. And I bought a brand new car and had more problems than any other car I bought used or new. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's kind of why I'm putting this video out before I'm putting out my actual, like, uh, walking in the dealer, taking delivery, because those are all happy videos. I don't feel like putting out any happy videos because I haven't been happy from day one. And Dodge is ignoring me. They're abandoning me. They're not returning my calls. They're not trying to make it right. So for anyone that's in the market considerably trying to consider and buying a Dodge, I mean, whatever Dodge it is, is all Dodge. Customer service is the same people you want that your complaint's going to go to. Just beware, because you could be in the same position I'm in right now, where you buy a brand new car or even a used car, and Dodge is giving you their butt to kiss, and they're not responding to you. They're not calling you back. They're not trying to make anything right. And that's an awful feeling after you spent $80,000 on a brand new car. That's a very awful feeling when you feel like the manufacturer does not have your back and they're not trying to make it right and they're not trying to keep you happy as a consumer. Like I said, Bronda, the manager from Williams Brother Dodge Dundee, Michigan, she's been the opposite. She's been the one trying to make it right, trying to pull strings, reaching out to people, trying to get me this part faster. You know what I mean? So she's been the only hope I had left to, before I'm just feeling like I'm, I just got got. I feel like I got robbed. <laughs> I got robbed. Like, that's how I feel right now. Um, so, like I said, if anyone from Dodge sees this video, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to, to, to talk to me. Feel free to change my mind that I feel like Dodge customer service is the worst. Their approval rating is a zero. And like I said, buyers, beware. Beware. I mean, I like the car. I love the car. But if I knew it was going to be like this, I would have definitely bought something else. Definitely. Definitely, if I could have known that this was going to happen ahead of time, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy another Dodge again. Um, so feel free to contact me on here. Uh, and then we can, you know, if Dodge customer service somehow makes this right after they didn't made it wrong and sabotage my whole relationship, my whole loyalty towards Dodge is gone. If they can figure out a way to try to make it right, I'll make another video. I don't have no problem with that being transparent. But for right now, Dodge customer service, it's a zero. It's a negative in my book. They're dodging me. They're refusing to return my calls. They're not making it right. They can care less about making me happy as a consumer that just spent this much money on a brand new car after having loyalty and buying two other brand new cars from them. So beware. You can have loyalty all you want. 
the ice don't care. They'll ignore your calls. They won't call you back. They'll keep saying that this person is on your case, so I can't do anything. I'll send them a message. I'll send their supervisor a message, but it's not in my hands. It's in your case manager, your caseworker's hands. You know what I mean? So that's it, man. Now, now let's see if it, let's see if anything changes. If nothing does change, I will be doing a follow-up video on the journey, and I will be giving video, having these videos up of me taking delivery and you seeing the car and you know all that happiness. But I can't put out happy videos when I'm not happy. I don't even have my car to make another video with it anyway. I've been sitting in the shop. Hopefully it's being taken care of and not joyriding. But, you know what I mean? It is It is what it is. Um, I mean, as a car guy, I would never want my, my baby sitting in no shop for no month. I didn't even want it sitting in the vinyl shop for um overnight. Why the clear vinyl got dried up on the front bumper? That, that was hurting me. It's like having your kids stay over somebody else's house that like, you barely know like that. You know what I mean? That's what it is. So, uh, anybody got any comments, feel free to leave them. Um, and like I said, whatever happens after the day, as far as Dodge customer service, I'll post a video. I'll let y'all know how it went.